standing in the rain. Wow, I feel good. The Thulu said that I would. So nice. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc., the Thursday campaign, the consolation campaign, or Cthulhu Comes. Mm. Everybody dies. Uh, that is directed to someone who couldn't remember the name of the show she was on. Carol. Which, and you know what? Anyway. I think it should be Cthulhu Rises because you know you go rocks fall, everyone dies. Cthulhu Rises. I think you missed an opportunity there. Water okay. rises, and everyone we're drowns. Missing the uh, the um, uh, what's the thing called? Um, the innuendos if we do oh no actually cthulhu rises yeah no i could work with that too. yeah yeah see 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 all right i'm Frank, not gonna change it is now c-r-e-d <laughs> cthulhu rises cred. everyone dies oh my god it's cred oh <coughs> the cred campaign none of these the people cred have camp. cred but hopefully by the end of it they will uh hey everybody i'm kyle and uh uh these these four interpret people uh, 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 are going to be going through a terrible, awful campaign uh, that I have devised with the help of other people. Um, okay. I'm already getting distracted, which you know is a good sign. Uh, <laughs> so before we go off, let me just read the notes that I have to read right off the script here. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our archive. If you want on to YouTube, shit man. About D and D, come. To, it doesn't say on YouTube. Wow, D &D, the archives on YouTube. Discord folks. channel. I am reading off the list here. <laughs> the Wanna list get lizard. some cool RPG goffs? I think that's supposed to be gifts, Frank. Uh, for friends and family, try our store. <laughs> Most importantly, if you want to, oh no, update your Adobe Flash Player. What? Don't do that. I don't even think that's a real thing. I think no. you have to install it nowadays. It's gone. Uh, more importantly, <laughs> if you want to play, but not this week, but next week, uh, you can hit us up at Twitter at uh, Imhobo Inc. or Imhobo Inc. at gmail.com. Uh, we want to thank our special sponsors, but I'm going to stop before I even thank the sponsors. I'd like to thank our <coughs> artist, D, who made all these cool portraits. I forgot to thank her two weeks ago. Uh, uh, she has been absolutely wonderful work with, uh, she can't say the same about these people, but I think their portraits all look great. Uh, and so that's a special shout out to D. Uh, now back to our sponsors, pirate dog dice for when you're rolling like shit, get pirate dog dice. Uh, and finally, Oddfish Games for their Adventure Sense and their Shine Project. If you're looking to uh, uh, get rid of that dog smell, get Adventure Sense. Don't get raw sewage. Uh, <laughs> and finally, the Shine Project, if you're writing something or if you're trying to come up with some sort of adventure or campaign hook and you want to be completely and utterly original, try the Shine Project. It asks the right questions to get your story off the ground. But that's enough about me and my beautiful sponsors. Let's go around the table and meet our players, starting with uh, Cleo, because she's not paying attention. Yes, she is. No, she's not. She's I her. am paying attention. She can multitask, <laughs> apparently. It's called ADHD. <laughs> Hi, my name's Caitlin. I am playing Cleo, the Azamar protector sorcerer, who's got lovely, beautiful purple hair and a ton of attitude to go with it. And a babysitter. And a babysitter. But he's a real great babysitter. Guy. Yeah, he's got to buy me new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next, Anja Carol, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Carol. I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. And I'm playing Anja Jaeger in this campaign, who is a what the hell am I? Half elf and ranger. Yeah, that's what I'm at. I also appear plenty on between the roles and the one shots and tend to just lurk around here all the time. So all right. Uh let's go with uh Bran, uh, I can tell you're on the edge of your seat there. Uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us all about you? 
Hello, I am Bran, also known as DJ. Yeah. I'll be playing the Monk Physician. And yes, you can tell by my face that I'm super excited. <laughs> super excited. <coughs> and he just can't hide it. Oh, okay. Uh, Riley, before you lose control, Ernie, why don't you introduce yourself? Because I like it. Right. So uh, my name's Ernest, and I'm playing Riley, the uh, curious warlock who isn't afraid to help out. <coughs> um, and I'm hoping that they let me navigate or help uh, cook some potatoes this time. We'll see how that goes. Um, you yeah. make it sound like you didn't do that last time. No. I mean, I enjoyed <laughs> doing it. I wouldn't mind doing it again, getting a second shot. <laughs> Redemption. I, you know, it's occurred to me that the number one thing that has sabotaged our trip is Riley. I didn't do or Riley's anything. dice. Let's let's be specific. It's Riley's dice. I blame D and D Beyond. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, all right. That's why I got my dice tonight with me. All the dice. I have dice too, but I'm gonna probably use D and D Beyond. Oh, here, mine's a unicorn. Show it off. <laughs> oh, wait. No, there we go. Here we go. My uh, Cthulhu dice. Oh, there it is. The one is a tentacle. So are the other numbers. Anyway, all right. Anything I forgot. Uh, we have podcast there somewhere, probably in some listing either on Twitch or around us. But, uh,. Tiny URL uh, uh, com slash Murder Hobo Inc. Audio. Dot audio? Dot audio. It's in Twitch chat. Audio dot. Got it. No, dot audio. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. All right. So last time we have met our adventures, the mysterious plague doctor from a prominent family, the a dreamer escaping her past, the clumsy bookworm on a quest for knowledge that is otherworldly uh, and finally the black sheep of religious royalty uh, sent away for her own good have all boarded a ship known as the Hazel Hazel's Folly captained by Captain Kenza uh, we've met several members of the crew three dwarves uh, twin half elves uh, 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 an old half elf so you know talking, vomiting words out of the mouth, uh, and the first mate, Aiden Basala, and perhaps uh, the most unusual member of the crew, other than these four, uh, Mozetta, a undead golem thing, with a grappling hook for a hand. Well, they set off, and instead of getting the luxurious ride that they were hoping for, they were quickly pressed into work, uh, where... They barely got out of the harbor before they ran aground, uh, <laughs> uh, but managing to get themselves off the sandbar, uh, uh, they managed to continue on their travels for a few days, avoiding poisoning uh, via bad potatoes, and uh, at the end encountered a pirate crew that had... Uh, uh, some sort of relation to Captain Kenza from her past. Uh, they were quickly defeated, run off, and the dead bodies uh, shown good respect and then thrown into the water. And <coughs> that is where we start as our ship goes sailing away onto their next destination. I would like to ask a question first. Sure. Are we starting directly after the fight, or we have, or we have time to sleep and rest and heal? Oh, uh, it's going to be like a couple hours after the fight, so you will have the time to do that. Uh, short rest. So short rest. Short rest. Yeah, you can guys can take a short rest, um, and it is during that short rest that Nebby comes up from below the galley. Uh, and mentions that there is a leak in the ship and that it is now taking on water. For those who go down to take a look at it, 
there appears to be three holes in the bottom side of the ship that are springing water mm, at a rate that it would probably sink the ship in a couple days. But at the meantime, someone needs to start bailing out the ship. And Captain Kenza uh, uh, lets you know that they will be able to get some repairs done at a port known as Rizante, where you are going to be picking up the last bit of your cargo. Yeah. We're going to make it there? You're going to be bailing out the ship. And so let's start with our first rolls of tonight. Uh, Bran, you have been asked to reattach Mozetta's arm after he lost that. So if you would give me a medicine <laughs> check for that, and if you want to uh, and then someone needs to bail out the ship as you go along. So I'll need a strength check for that. And I'll then... help. <laughs> uh, I can so do that. While I sew up Mazetta, yes. I would also like to identi- attempt to identify him to see if he is uh, either Golem or Undead. Sure. Uh... And that's a uh, dirty 20 for the medicine check. Dirty 20 for the medicine check. Yeah, you are able to reattach Mozetta's arm. And even as you go to do that, you notice there are these strange tube apparatus that go along where maybe some of the veins would normally be. Um that are pumping out some sort of liquid that isn't necessarily blood or um, it's pumping out some sort of liquid. And if you wish, you are able to reattach the arm and reattach these tubings together so that Mosetta has full function of his arm. Um, he I is would something like to... else. <laughs> I would like to gather up some of that liquid and place it in one of my vials. Uh, I have a large medicine case that I have usually on my back, probably with me. It was probably down in the ship, you know, during the travel, but that's where I have most of my medical equipment. I will take some of that for lady for later study. All right. You do that. Uh, Rolls for who's bailing out the ship this time around. Uh, Probably me and Agus trying to help because I'm str- I'm pretty strong. I'm One pretty strong other. too. All right. Well, we both can bail. I don't. I already rolled. I got a twenty. Wow. All right. What's what is it? Just uh, a unnatural trigger? twenty. Oh, an unnatural twenty. Okay, yeah. No, uh, it's it's a while, and you end up setting up a a way to where. You don't even have to do too much work. All you have to do is carry the bucket of water up and out of the ship every once in a while. And you're able to plug some of the holes, although not entirely successful. Uh, Anja. Uh, What kind of a check was it again? Strength? Strength. Uh, 14. 14. You also managed to help out with bailing out the ship uh, as the crew continues getting the sails underway and all that. Cleo, what are you doing? Do I have to bail the ship? Like, how? <laughs> you do not have to bail the ship. Uh, if you remember from this. last time, uh, you can deal with rigging. You can attempt navigating. You can swab the deck. Now that uh, <laughs> now that Mozetta is getting his arm reattached, you could attempt to cook, or you could do nothing. There's no. Wait, I'm sorry. Are you guys just jumping into the water? Is there like a life? No, oh. no, no, no. We're not sinking. We bail, bail. Basically, we're taking the water out by buckets. Mm-hmm. And the ship is staying afloat by some miracle. I'm thinking bail like jumping. No, 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 no. Bailing is also when you, you could take, do that too. You can I don't take, literally taking. Yeah, I like got Yeah, we're taking the water out. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, um, I'll try to plug up those holes. <laughs> Sure. Uh, how are you with Carpenter's tools? 
I mean, the thief in me has to be somewhat crafty, right? I don't know. <laughs> what 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 kind of a check is Crawford How are you tools? trying to plug up these holes? <laughs> uh, I don't do. Is there anything around? Can I like put? I don't know. What would be good? I keep seeing potatoes, and I can't get that out of my mind. The last I know Riley, Riley, <laughs> Riley, <laughs> Riley. Tell them what you just did with the potatoes. <laughs> Yeah, I used some potatoes to plug those holes. Uh, <laughs> rustic potatoes are the best because they're starchy, or so I've heard. Um, I just look at you like, you know, and if it stops, does it stop the Do water? We have like Mr. Corn? Jim? It does not, unfortunately. But the water <laughs> coming out of it does smell like potatoes and is very cloudy. That's Do we have like so or something? Like from a barrel or? One more time. Do we have like corks or something? Like, you know, wine bottles? Uh, roll like a d12. Use? What? Uh, roll a d12. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm like not gonna find any. You know what? I'll take my normal dice. Why am I trying to use D and D beyond? They always fail me. Five? Five. Reroll. Wow, we both got five. We both got five. Seven. Nine. No, you do not find cork. It does appear that the potatoes are the best way to uh, plug up the hole. And that's only going so far, it appears. Bran, yes. Um, Obviously, I'm dealing with Mosetta right now, but are they still messing around with this leak by the time I'm done with a 20 and how odd Mosetta is um, they fix the leak as well as they could by the time you're done fixing Mosetta you do realize that it is still leaking but they're probably moving on to other things I will ask the captain or the first mate whichever one I find first do you have any tar and Ew. excess lumber? I don't have any. Well, it'd be part of the cargo. And if we start using that, we're going to be losing a lot of money on this trip. So I'd rather you guys just bail it out every occasion. But if you have some other idea, I'd be willing to hear it. As yeah. you talk to Aiden Vasala. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, I want to investigate those holes. Sure. Because what made them? I'm going to assume it wasn't any of our friendly pirates above. Maybe. Take a look. Unless somebody snuck down there and put three holes in the ship. Remember, we almost did run oh. aground earlier. Who's wearing heels? Oh, true. Putting all these holes in the ship. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, in- investigation, right? So that's a 19. 19. Um, whoa. whoa. So <laughs> using dice, dice, real dice. <laughs> uh, what you see is it does look like the wood has been punctured in three places, uh, roughly five inches apart uh, in a triangular way. Um, wood is torn. Mm, yeah, five inches apart, triangular way. It look like that's it over came- my head. Um, I'm just thinking legs. I'm sorry. Is it? Is it? Was it punctured from the outside or the inside? Punctured from the outside in. Oh, goody! You would probably find out more information if you wanted to jump in the water and look from the outside in. No. (laughs) I remember how last session. I remember how last session ended. I would get eaten. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Anja doesn't hasn't seen it, but. you gave a certain drop last, at the end of last session of something big dragging one of the corpses down with them with clawed clawed hands, I assume. So, I don't I'm know. like, and it doesn't look like it was drilled or something like that. It looks like it was wood splintered. Wow! Like if you were to shove a nail through a piece of wood, uh, and then pull it out and then look at it from the other side, that kind of looks like what happened. Oh, goody. 
against Giant Seer, and it's fine. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um, I'm going to go to the captain, Actually, and I'm going to say, ask her if there's anything... Summer. What's her name? Uh, Kenzia? Captain Kenza. Kenza. Like, no I. Um... Hey, Captain. Yes. Do you have you sailed this way before? Uh, many a times, yes. Have you ever but, come across something large enough to put uh, to puncture the ship with probably claws or something from the outside? Well, there's all sorts of creatures in the water, giant sharks. <coughs> A swordfish, dire swordfish. They're terrible things. They can punch a hole right through a, a galleon. But wouldn't the bad be that would be one hole, not three? Unless I guess multiple. Correct. Ugh. Let's see. Um, unfortunately, no, I haven't really come across anything like that. Uh, well, we will have to be on our guard because. Something clearly did this and is nearby. We're not too far from the port, and once we're there, we can get repairs. Okay. Otherwise, we're just going to have to keep bailing out the ship and keep sailing as quick as we can. No, no, well, I would imagine a port would be, well, I, is it a deep water port? Or is it a shallower port? Because if it's shallower, then the mo whatever it is probably wouldn't fall us there. Anyways, I would guess. Rosante is a shallow port built off a marsh, so it is fairly shallow there. The waters are murky, but All people right. there know how to fix ships. That that's that is fair. All right. Well, are I you will... doing okay? Oh, I'm. You look like you haven't gotten much sleep lately. I, I I'm fine. I'm fine. Truly, I'm gonna go up top though, or. Or are we up top already? You're up top. All right, I'm this is a just... very small ship, very close to the water, just because of how much stuff you have down below. I, I'm going to go, and I'm going to stand on the rail, and I'm going to just keep an eye on the water. Sure. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Uh, I'm try D&D &D Beyond. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it works. Well, if it's it's rolling, these are really up oh, there. It goes. Oh, hey, the dice of the frost dice. Sixteen. Sixteen. Lots of deep ocean views. Anything could literally be under those waves, just following you along. That's sure, it's not nothing awful. It's not creepy at all. Nope. <laughs> if you look at it like a TV show, you know, there's actually a camera that goes down to the bottom and you see the ship sailing over it. And then you see something moving along the ocean floor. <laughs> but you don't see that, Anja. <laughs> no, I guess I don't. Even though that was a decent roll. <laughs> um, no, so this is um, over the course of the next couple of days. You continue on sailing. We'll go ahead and make another check, and I'll have uh, someone make a D6 roll while we're at it, too. Uh, and one of you needs to continue bailing out, so I need that strength check from at least one of you. Otherwise, there is the rigger who is doing the acrobatics check, the navigator <coughs> making a survival check, swabbing the decks, or cooking, or doing nothing. Hmm. Well, I can rig, or I can, I can do just about anything. Wait, we need to cook for what? So we can eat. To eat. Oh, I'll cook. I'll be. Like, I'll do it. Um, uh, I got a seven on bailing that water. Yeah, you. Uh... Drink it. <laughs> The potatoes start popping out, and as you go <laughs> to try and shove them back in there, you make a bigger hole in the boat. Oh, shit. Nice. Uh, and was some of the cargo is ruined, <laughs> but the triplets come down to help you, although they're shoving you out of the way to bail water faster, unfortunately. No one, no one saw that, right? 
<laughs> I'm telling Do a you. Do perception check for me. I'm beginning oh. to wonder why Riley doesn't want us to get to this island. Uh, I mean... Not one. <laughs> not one. <laughs> not one on the perception check. Uh, oh. Yeah, you look around. Oh. There's Nuki behind you. She's watching you. The cat, if you guys remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember the cat. You're fine, though. You're totally fine. No one's <laughs> anything. Nothing, nothing it's happened. just the cat. Uh, maybe that dark, shadowy figure over there. N- nothing to worry about. Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> um, during these days, or towards the beginning, uh, Brand will go up to Anja and ask her, do you want to do the rigging, or do you want to your hand at, sur- at the navigation? I can do either. Um, Choose one. Yeah. What is, are you good at uh, tracking? I, am, I tend to be good at whatever I put my mind to. Fine, I'll let you do the tracking. I, yeah, I know you you're. Survive, you mean the navigation? Yeah, I. Mine is <clears throat> out of game. Mine is a plus four. I don't know what yours is. If it's better, and my, but my acrobatics is better. So. Dirty meta gamers. Yeah, dirty meta gamers. I will. Oh, yeah. I will do. I will do rigging because I am better at it than. Mm. Unfortunately. I only have a total of eight. I rolled low. Low. All right. I will make an acrobatics check. That's an 11 plus six is 17. <coughs> uh, and you are rigging. So, yeah, no. Uh, rigging goes well. Uh, you can see the half elf twins are eyeing your work appreciative and I believe uh, that Casa uh, the female uh, and the rougher one of those she uh, did not care for you earlier but she's she's seen you're learning the ropes better and she appreciates that uh, Bran you take the ship off course for a little bit while uh, uh, the first mate and captain are taking their own turns bailing water uh, and Cleo, what would you like? <coughs> can I get the cook? You can cook. Make a survival check. Mm. Let's see if you poison people. Mm. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, Nebby's just... Oh my goodness, you're so much better than that Riley fella. He was always just writing in his book instead of actually peeling potatoes. <laughs> and oh, you are so wonderful. Darling, oh, you, if I had a daughter, she would be just like you. At least I hope she would be anyway. And she continues Aww. jabbering on. Uh, but unfortunately, because Bran and Riley have failed, your next and your last check will be made at disadvantage. But is there any sort of... Uh, Anything you want to do on the ship before I ask for the next roll? Um, I wish I could do two rolls. That's what I wish. I think I'm going to go back to bailing. Because <laughs> I'm actually pretty strong. Okay. Um, before I forget, someone give me a d6. Any one of us? Any I'll do it. I'll do okay, it. go ahead, Riley. Do it. Yeah. Six. For once, yeah. <laughs> Great. We're using now real call on this random rules. table that I have now. Yeah, we're using real call through the rules, so the lower is better. Oh, so exactly. th- that's why Riley keeps rolling low. I get it now. Yeah, that's why. Hey, you guys didn't realize that's what we were doing. You're. I we did. are rolling. Uh, it's D1 like golf. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now what? All right. Uh, someone needs to bail. These oh, checks are made at disadvantage now because oh. it's taking you a little bit longer to get into Rizante because you got lost and you're taking on more water than usual. I'll bail. Okay. I'm just going to roll because I have to roll two. Oh, yeah, awesome. The disadvantage fucking killed me because the good roll was an 18. Uh, no, nope, that's the good one. The disadvantage, though, was a two plus three is five. Fucking disadvantage. 
I didn't roll a one. I didn't All roll right. One. Uh, Riley, <laughs> what were you doing? Um. Well, I don't know. I end up putting a bigger hole in the ship. You could attempt to talk your way into doing something else that you've done before, if you like. Um. Otherwise, you can swab the deck with the water that you added onto the boat, along with uh, your friend Anja. I haven't swabbed the deck before. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. That's just another strength trick. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that's that's a five. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was a higher dice roll than mine, though. Got a four plus one, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's bet four is better than two. All right, Bran. <laughs> How'd I fail swapping this deck? <laughs> Bran will actually take some time to himself. He, on the couple days that we're traveling, he needs to meditate and train a little bit, uh, spend some time exercising. Uh, Set up a dummy. Yes. Sure. Uh, go ahead. Um, either a dex con or wisdom check. You choose. Uh, and Cleo, what are you doing on board the boat? Am I not cooking anymore? Oh, no. You make another check. Roll at disadvantage because your provisions are starting to run low because you're taking your time. <coughs> I am. How am I supposed to just take a nap? Mm, 13. 13? Okay. Uh, the meal keeps the troops going and everyone is working hard. Uh, Riley's uh, attempts at swabbing the deck are incredibly done very well. He is getting that wood wet on top. And several times as Anja goes up to dump a uh. bucket of water, she ends up slipping and dumping the water back down the hole of the ship. I can help. <laughs> uh, Bran, how was your uh, meditation going? About the same. I rolled an eight. It is really hard to concentrate with everyone making the noise and just slipping. And <coughs> by the end of it, people are getting on everyone's nerves. Um, but just as everyone's morale is beginning to uh, uh, break and they get really tired of each other, uh, the call of Land Ho! is heard and if you look out uh, uh, to your uh, right you see a tall cliff with a ominous building looking on top of it the work the water underneath you begins to get murky uh, and brackish um, and as you start pulling around there you see the sights of other sails from other ships um, and Rizante itself on this beautiful green hillside. Hmm. I guess it's we can we can we can disembark for a while. You will be disembarking for a while, yes. I will oh, stare at the I will stare at the land as we uh, approach, take in the view. Sure. Yeah. As you begin to get closer the the ship mass you start to realize there's only two other ships there and actually none larger than your own um and you do have to pull in uh to a dock farther outside of the town itself um the cliff with the ominous building on there is a dark uh square stone structure uh and the town itself uh, not necessarily a green hillside, but a lot of the buildings themselves are fallen into disrepair. 
uh, and the green is from moss growing on top of these buildings. And as you pull in, uh, get the ship tied off, uh, Captain Kenza leads you off the ship, uh, and you encounter a, a very froggy-looking gentleman who has an unpleasant demeanor. What do you want? I look to Captain Kenzie to answer her. <laughs> what do we want? What do we want? We want ship repairs. We want. What else do we want? Provisions. That's exactly what we need. Uh, and provisions next and time, you should repair. probably let the captain talk about that. Well, I uh, looked at the captain. She wasn't saying anything. <laughs> plus, it's like plus. Admittedly, I understand. It's kind of weird talking to yourself. It is. Thank you. Um, we're here on business. I'm here to collect some cargo from the Dagonet Inn, and we need some repairs done on our ship. Ship looks terrible, but the inn's in town and up the street on the far side. All right. Is there a place for the sailors to drink? And he will tell you about the cauldron in town uh, that is also... Uh, uh, Closer than the Dagon Inn. Uh, and with Captain Kenza paying for repairs and paying for uh, space to rent on the dock, you have the evening to yourselves. Uh, Captain Kenza decides to leave Mosetta and the, uh, the uh, half-elf twins on the ship to make sure everything gets repaired. Uh, Aiden Pasela is off with the other crew members to make sure they do not get too rowdy into town. Uh, and what would you folks like to do? First, I'd like to find out, do we know how long the repairs will take? Captain Kenza ends up paying a decent amount of money to get it done rather quickly. And so you will be in town for a day or so. What's the, name of, sorry, what's the name of the town again? Rizante. Rizante. Mm -hmm. Have I heard of this town before? Uh, make a knowledge check. Intelligence roll. History, I suppose? Okay. No. It likes coming up four, so only a five total. Everything's coming up Riley. Uh, <laughs> No, you have, this is a backwater uh, port town, if ever there is one. I mean, you grew up in the city of Arul Catan. This is, well, this isn't even dog poop on the bottom of its heels. It's, it's awful here. Uh, and the folk honestly don't look too friendly either. Uh, mm. I look to the rest of everybody. I don't know about all of you. I think I would like to see if there's an inn and sleep on land that doesn't move for a night. Well, yeah, I figured that's what we were going to do. Obviously as well. It'll probably be very noisy when they're repairing the ship overnight. True. What Only was... if the inn has a sauna. A sauna? I, I, what's a sauna? Have you? I, I kind of gesture to the place around us. I am sorry, but I truly doubt they will have a sauna here. How am I supposed to like re-energize my holy self? Pray. Pray. We will pray. Uh, your God, I would assume that would help. Whoever your God is. I never caught. What religion are you from again? I'm so gonna butcher this name. Okay, we'll help. <laughs> Bo Boko? <laughs> Was it Bokob? Bokob? Is that how you say it? Bokob? Yeah, there you go. It's Bokob. Bokob? I'm like, I know. It's right there, and I didn't even look. I tried to read it. Yes. Um. Yeah. <laughs> may, I, may I roll a religion check to see if I know about Bacab? 
Sure. A little better than a four. Nope, that's another four. So seven. You gonna ask me about it? What Bo-Cob is it? Bokob is still one of the uh, main religions uh, in Arul Katan. Um, so, what generally do you know about Bokob, DJ? Not a fan. <laughs> Not a bit. Okay, uh, Bokob is a Greyhawk. God, if I am to remember I've right, heard, and he I've heard of this is god. A, a god of magic, control, knowledge, um, uh, a, a god for wizards. Um, and having grown up in the city of Arul Katan, and for the rest of you folks, you would know this uh, the religion was founded by some wizards um, uh, headed by a family of Asimar. Um, and as you start putting two to two together, you would imagine that Cleo is probably in some way relation to this family. Um, the head of the church is one Benedict the Thirteenth, uh, with his wife and holy crap! How many children did we give him? Seventeen children. Uh, only no. Uh, s- Six children. I was like, there's not seventeen. Yeah, oh, I'm one okay. of one of six. I have That's, five siblings. What town was this again? Or city was this again? This is Rizante. No, I mean where where you're talking about where she's from. A rule Catan. That's the one oh, yeah, we came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in one of those weird places where it's uh, it's Mexico, but the capital is Mexico City. <laughs> You're from Arucatan, and the capital is Arucatan. Okay. Uh, I, I look at Chloe for a moment. I keep finding it so odd that you say they should worship you. Do you not have respect for the god that you come from? The God runs through my veins, so worshiping him is also worshiping me. Even though my God is of death, it does not mean we should worship death itself. I mean, gotta have the followers, gotta preach on, as my dad says. Gotta help everyone. I can agree to that. But I see you not really helping much. What? Who's not helping much? You were off sunning yourself at the beginning of this trip. Well, I gotta keep that nice goddess glow. How else are people gonna know I'm of the god set? That I can glow and shine light into their life where they need it by your actions to be fair yeah. and glowing being tan and they feel well, like a sauna i think the thing of it is your god needs the worshipers i mean if this is like i, I know a lot of i know they're <clears throat> out of game i know there's a lot of a lot of you know uh, deep you know, pantheons where the gods gain their power from their followers uh, is this such a pantheon, by the way, Mr. GM? Uh, one more time for the question. Okay, the question is, in this world, uh, are the gods empowered by their followers? Like, if you have no followers, then you're not really, a, you're not a god. You lose power. Do you not understand mm-hmm. my, do you understand my question? It's, it's something I've seen... Oh, are the deities reliant on their followers? Yes, yes. Better way to ask. Powers? Yes, in some manner of speaking. Okay, so so that is my... That's Maybe if you were religious, you'd know a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. But that, um, that's, I'm just going by what, you, what, what I hear. And, uh, uh, and so, like, obviously, like, most churches need to have money and followers to, like, keep up the church... Yeah, I mean, basically, it is your job to bring followers to Bokob, mm-hmm. and he will benefit 
uh, by his power growing from the followers you bring in. Ultimately, they still have to Brand, worship your do you your say God. anything? About Riley? Or about this? Yes. About Riley. Um, about so Riley? Did you say he's sailing away? No, no. He is walking away as you guys are all having your discussion. I will look in his direction and then I will look at everyone else and I will say I believe that we should probably move along. It seems at least one of our ilk has grown tired of this conversation. Fair. And Cleo and Anja, you realize that Riley is no longer with you. I do <laughs> he's going to get back odd. on He's going to get back on the ship at some point. I do find it a little odd. I figured he'd be writing in his notebook about this. You know, that's a good point. He does seem to really like to, he really does seem to write a lot in that notebook about everything. Um, I will move along down the deck to look for the inn that was mentioned. Uh, Actually, did they mention an inn or just a bar? Uh, you know what? I have this argument with yeah, Frank all and, the time. And then there was a separate My, cauldron bar. <laughs> yeah. There is the cauldron <coughs> bar, which does have rooms, which is going to be closest. The Dagonet Inn is uh, very north to the city. So let me see. Oh, I do give you props to think... Dagonet Inn. Very yeah. clever. I, it's a great I, name. This is... And, Riley did take notes at the beginning about the cob and the inn and everything when he gave a shit, but when the conversation started steering into other things, he walked off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you walk down uh, uh, this green mossy hill. The road itself is functional. Um, and as you get to the walls of the city, because the port is actually outside of the city walls, um, the walls in such disrepair that it honestly looks like the wind could blow it over. And in a lot of places, it does look like the wind has blown it over. Um, going in through the gate, you don't have any trouble other than people giving you sidelong looks. Of, you don't feel very welcome here. Um, the The city itself is in this perpetual haze the ground is always wet um there's sea life actually walking on the streets you see a crab walking out of an alley a cat actually then grabs the crab and starts walking away with it uh, and as it jumps over a puddle something grabs the cat and drags it under um like what something with tentacles and it didn't look like this was a very deep puddle, but clearly it is. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of the town you're in, um, you walk down the street, you walk past the the cauldron, the bar that uh, uh, the harbor master was telling you about earlier, and asking for directions. You head north away from it, up the hills. And as you get further and further away from the harbor, the buildings just look worse and worse and in more disrepair. Walls are falling down. There's no roofs anywhere. Um, in some cases, it does look like there's an inhabited house, which you can only tell because there's moss that has been scraped off the door itself. Uh, but they seem to leave the windows covered uh, for privacy. Um to where eventually you get to the top of the hill um, and you find the Dagonet Inn, uh, which is actually the only cheery and bright place in the area. Uh, the rest of the sailors end up going to the cauldron. You uh, either walk with Captain Kenza or she is there ahead of you waiting to meet her contact to get the rest of the cargo for the trip out to Farzeen. I would like to ask, did on the trip to Dagon and in, did we spot any churches, shrines, open businesses, blacksmiths, 
the normal. Taxidermies. No. Taxidermies. There's like five of them in town for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Strangely enough, oh, yeah. how did you know about that? <laughs> no, uh, most of these buildings are in disrepair. There doesn't appear to be any churches in the area. Um, if you want to make a a wisdom religion check or uh, just a straight religion check, that's up to you. Uh, if you guys are looking for anything in particular, uh, 16, that's not bad. Uh, was that using straight religion or wisdom? That's my religion check with you know, yeah. stat bonus. Religions tend to have a lot of things in, con, uh, in common. Uh, one of them is they like to be on the the high ground to say be the first thing that say a sun hits. Uh, you know that's why churches tend to have the cross that shoots way up, so that the first light that hits the town is usually on the cross, and the last light to hit it is on the cross. Uh, um, and knowing that churches tend to like to be built up, you may gather that the building on top of the cliff overlooking. Uh, uh, the water is uh, might be a place of worship. But there was speaking of a library around here too, correct? There was, yes. The repository, if I remember correctly. Which, if you ask about that, <laughs> it's actually not on the water. It's not far away from the land either it's somewhere in the middle of the city and if you were taking the most direct route without asking about it you would end up missing and bypassing it entirely well i guess we should i will go to see about a room and see what it costs sure ends up costing about five copper a room uh there is a meal tonight uh and if you want to do a meal in a room it's 12 copper a piece. You end up getting uh, wine from the uh, local nation of, I believe it is Orsel. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ah, no, Uskin. It's uh, so damn close. Uh, wine from the local country of Uskin, as well as what appears to be sturge meat. Sturge. Oh boy. They're fun. I will go with the room and meal. And I will also ask about the building up on top. And what does this uh what does this inn look like? This uh dag what is it? Dagnet. Dag no. on it. Dag on on it. it. That's right. <laughs> Dag on please, please describe for me. Uh, the Dagonet Inn is a very um, oxymoronic building in that there are places for halflings, there are places for giants, nothing in between. Uh, so even as they serve you the uh, local wine, it is in a glass that is about maybe about the size of your head, filled about halfway up. Uh, the owners themselves, one is a halfling, the other is uh, a, a half giant of red hair uh, uh, by the name of Obed and Nora Marsh. Um, and despite the fact that everything's a little wonky and nowhere in the middle, they are very warm in greeting you, unlike the rest of the people you've met in this town. Uh and there is a large fire in the middle of the room giving a white warm glow i will take my food and drink to my to the room that i have procured and eat there in privacy sure you get to your room and unfortunately you got the big boy food you got the little boy room as the bed is halfling yeah. sized. Bread to eat with us? 
I will kind of, uh, as she's mentioned that, as I kind of leave, it's, it's nothing personal. I like to eat in private. Is some like Mandalorian shit? Can only take your mask off when no one's around. What? Sure. Let's think of it that way. We haven't seen your face, have we? You have not. Mm. I will get a room and thing. If I will eat down by the, as you said, there's a fire. I will eat down by the fire. Twelve copper, huh? Do you sit in the uh, the large chairs or the small chairs? Ah, there's nothing in between, right? There's nothing in between. Uh, I'm going to sit. I mean, hang on it. There's nothing in between. Is there, in between. <laughs> is there a carpet on the floor? <laughs> like, far below in between. Is there some sort of carpet on the floor? Yes, there is, there is a. Uh, Tommy? Is that it? Right? There is a carpet on the floor uh, made of some very fine looking uh, uh, brown fur. Like a bear or like something else. Never mind. I was uh, gonna say like find out. like a druid. What the heck kind of a check is that? Uh, if you take Nature? a look and honestly <laughs> What kind of a check would you that be? You can look and you see a naked uh, uh, tail coming from the end of one of these carpets. Uh, it's a giant rat. And not just like a, a giant rat. It is large like bigger than a riding horse oh boy yeah uh that's that's the plan as i'm gonna sit on the floor i will sit on you know what there's no rat inside the skin so it's all good i sit on no rat inside the skin it's, 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 it is yeah. very clean uh, hey something in this town is And All I right, just uh, Cleo, what are you doing? Oh, I want to say to Cleo, by the way, I want to say, I'm sorry, I, there's definitely no sauna here. No. Sauna. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I I mean, we're all eating. No one wants to eat together? Well, I'm out. I'm sitting out here. You can, I'm not telling you to go away. You're sitting on the ground? I'm sitting, no, I'm sitting on the rug. I'm sitting on the rat rug. Eating on basically, yeah. I'm sitting there eating. And the chairs are too either too small or too tall. There's a sturge leg poking out of her bowl of food. Yum. Tasty. Uh, are there drinks? Uh, like I said, there is the local wine. Big glasses. I'll take a giant glass of the local wine and a small side of the food. Sure. Is there bread? It's cost bread? me 12 copper pieces. Of course there's bread. What kind of monsters do you think there are? There's bread, cheese, and sturge. Oh, that's why I just have bread. Am I getting bread you with my meal? That. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. That works. Yeah, dip it in. Um, dip it in the surge. Makes it delicious. Yeah, I'm going to take like There's a that thing. little kind of irony taste of like liver, but they treat it very <laughs> oh. well. So oh, that's. Salt and pepper. Yeah, salt, pepper, uh, some onions on there, bread, Just wine, warm, cheese. It's, it's going to be sea salt. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I will walk over to Anja and kind of like dust off the floor. And sit like you know, not cross-legged, but you know when your legs are on top of each other, like uh. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Real fancy. <laughs> so, hey, where's where's her, where's her? What the heck was your babysitter's name? I'm sorry, I keep calling that or uh, chaperone. Where's he? I was assume he's like with me, right? Okay. Did he come with her? Uh, he's rolling. Jeremiah he has been uh, by the triplets, the dwarves, to drink at the cauldron tonight. So you don't have a oh, chaperone. Oh, you have no chaperone! 
freedom. So, and as you look around and notice that Jeremiah's not there, Bran's not there, Riley's not there either. And oh, we'll go over girls. to Riley because he decided to split the party. <laughs> it wouldn't be a session I leave no. Bobo without it. <laughs> you are going down the streets. Uh, you ask for directions to find the repository. Um, and they tell you, they describe the bill for you. Uh, and you manage to get over there. And I want to make this clear to you. If you get in trouble here, there's no one who's going to help you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, no reason I'm telling you that or anything like yes, that. Why would I, I get in trouble normal, here? Anyways. <laughs> I'm um, not doing anything to get in trouble. Yeah, no, of course not. You you don't do that kind of stuff, Ernie. <laughs> Just remember not to summon anything larger than your head. No, right. Riley is turning over a new leaf. Riley is helpful. <laughs> Uh, you end up finding uh, what you assume to be the repository based on descriptions. Um, it's a haunted house, uh, essentially. I mean, there's no ghost or anything, but when you imagine the haunted house, rickety buildings boarded up, it is all of those things. Uh, there is a lone door. Um, uh, uh, you see candlelight peeking in through certain windows. Someone inside, if you wish to knock at the door. Uh, yeah, I knock at the door and I say, Hey, may I come in? You wait for an interminable long time before the door opens up and you see hey back to Cleo and uh, uh no I knew uh -oh. am I still here you are still here but your connection is getting I was typed your connection's getting very sketchy okay we'll keep going until I drop off and then we'll take a bathroom break when I finally do cut off uh Cleo Anja uh you enjoying your meal? Uh, anything sort you of. guys are talking about? Sort of. What are you talking about? It's delicious. <laughs> Actually, it probably is all right to me. Come to think of it. I've probably eaten some pretty strange stuff in my time. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I guess for me, I'm like, mmm. It's like when we're back at when we do our uh, outreach program. <laughs> <laughs> just ex gracefully accept the food as father says <laughs> so I'll, I'll sit and eat and I don't know make small talk uh, if you know I don't know if there's anything you want to say to me I sort of um, grilled you when we were on the ship so I guess so, how's your family? Uh, they're, as far as I know, they're fine. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen them. How long's a while? Because I've eaten I don't remember, I forget, right, like, sorry. <laughs> about, probably about four years or so. Mm. Four years? Mm. You left them or they left you? figure out how to answer that question and as she figures uh, out how to answer that question <coughs> riley the, uh a bill nye tall man half elven ears as well can i help you uh yes i heard this is a repository <coughs> of books and knowledge and i would like to learn while i can this is all the knowledge accumulated from all the dead families of Rizante in one place. Do you think you are allowed to walk in here and gain all the knowledge? There's a price. And what would the price be? Knowledge. Um... I have quite a bit of that that I could share. Is there any knowledge of interest to you? 
anything I haven't read yet. I've read quite a bit. And as he looks back and you look into the building, it is deceptively large on the inside. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm sure I have some books with me. Um, yeah, I share some of my books with them. I, I guess I don't know what I have with me. <laughs> All right. He takes a look through your books. Um, the Very Hungry Carrion Crawler. I've read that so many times. <laughs> Pride and phylacteries. That's old. Oh. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey Ooze. <laughs> I, I would never read this trash anyway. <coughs> what is that book that you have there? The large one with the ripped cover. Um, this points to your book. Oh, my book that I found the ritual in. The Eldridge book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, let him read through it. Takes it. Very large book, very small. What kind of book is this, Riley? Uh, it is a old cracked leather covered book with some um, runes, like Eldridge runes on it. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be, you know, fairly old, but the, the tight leather clasp has kept it intact. You may peruse as long as I'm still reading this book. And with that, he takes his candle. He goes, sits down at a lectern and begins to open and go through your book. And you are allowed free reign of the repository. Um, I'll have you roll. If you're looking for specific knowledge, uh, let me know that. Uh, otherwise, you can just roll a flat investigation check. You can find some interesting things in here, but it may take quite a while. Okay. Um, I would like to find things about Farzine or Eldritch beings, if One possible. One more time. Uh, I would like to find knowledge about either Farzine <laughs> or um, Eldritch beings. And if none of that, then anything that looks interesting, really. You start walking down the hallways, and um, you've been to the college bookstore here at Purdue, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You know how the basement looks, floor-to-ceiling books, everything stacked sideways in boxes. You don't yeah. have room yourself to walk. You realize Sounds that's good. probably why uh, Lycor is such a, a, a tall and skinny person, because he can squeeze through these. And you go through about these, um, and you do f see familiar Eldric symbols here and there. And if you pause to look, um, you see strange writing you've never read before. Um, uh, Kyle, I, yeah. I want to say the inspiration you gave me last time, I'm going to use that to huh? help me search. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Roll an investigation. Use your inspiration uh what do i add to that you roll twice take the higher oh it's just advantage it's just advantage well the first roll was a 23 let's see what the second roll is nine yeah so 23 23 <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh you go through uh you find um books uh here and there you find great divinations a Heart of Plus One Darkness, The Great Gadsby, and other illusionists. Um, Eat Some in Love, uh, Bahamut Shrugged, Cockatrice Soup for the Soul, uh, along with diaries from various families, uh, the Fens, the Oshwas. Uh, you come across what you would presume uh, uh, is a religious book um, from the here um, mentioning uh, a Dagon, an ancient being of the sea um, that all other creatures of the sea tend to worship. 
Um, you find mentions of Farzine, um, the goddess of light. Um, if you go deeper into that, uh, you learn of the gigantic statue that grows so black, blows so brightly um, that many ships use it to help guide their way out of the sea and into the wider world, or vice versa. Um, you read these strange things about uh, Zoogs that once inhabited the island. Uh, you learn about Uskin's own attempt at taking the island by force. Uh, Uskin being a very primeval nation where the halflings and the giants, half giants, reside, um, along with a lot of giant other creatures. Um, and they tend to use force, and they attempted to take the island. Um, but having no luck, the sea turning against them, um, and strange illnesses that they attracted while on the island, they also failed to get. Um, you find, as well, I didn't put it on that piece of paper. Where did I put it? You find a spell that you can add to your spell list, or actually you find a spell scroll of a spell known as the Kiss of Dagon. Ooh. That's good to know. Mm hmm And you have the book. Mm -hmm. We'll let you look up what that's... Shoot, I'm going to lose my connection here soon, I think. Um, and this is taking you quite a bit of time. Are you losing yourself in the book? Bradley? I love... I lost you. Yourselves in the book. What Sorry, about the, <laughs> the book? Let me start here again. As you are searching through and you're finding these tombs, these journals, these travel pamphlets from the travel center that closed very early on in the uh, city's uh, career, um, do you bother checking in with Lycor at all? Check in? Mm-hmm. Or are you just <laughs> digging in through this information, just gathering as much as you can? Yeah, I'm just gathering as much as I can. I don't really care. Okay. Uh, you are there for a couple of hours <coughs> while you're going through all of this. Uh, Bran, Anja, Cleo, you guys enjoy your meal. Um, although, Anja, you were about to... Anja, Anja was <laughs> about to answer a question about whether you were... The question yeah. is, how many ways can Kyle say my name? Anja. <laughs> I was about to answer. Well, oh God, the question was, did I leave? Shit. Did you leave your family? Did I leave my family? Did they leave, family, they leave us? Yeah. Did no? Did you leave your family, or did your family leave you? Um. I forgot to answer that question. It's a hard question. You didn't think about it? I did. It's a hard question. Leo, you just see uh, Anja with the. Bit yeah, of, I'm like, uh, so I go, I, uh, She's like, well, I want to believe that I left my family because I made the choice and I was the cool one. But no, in reality, my family left me and I have such trauma. PTSD, I cannot handle um, it. I guess you could say it was mutual. It was, it was. It's never mutual. That's no. lies. Someone's always upset. No, 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 nobody's upset. No, not at all. No, it, it, no. It was. It was supposed to help matters. I'm. You know what? I don't think I want to talk about this right now. And I eat more. I take a big go up. And Stew and eat it. <laughs> you gotta change the topic. I uh, we're really good. Well, what about I don't know. What about 
So what do you hope? How about, I, I will change topic. I'll go. What do you What do you hope to get out of this expedition? I mean, it sounds like you were not. I mean, are you happy going on this? I mean, it sounds like you were sent. Yeah, it's just you know part of the church training, I guess, as Dad puts it. Not, it's not bad. It's just not my, uh, how do people say, cup of tea. I'd rather just be hanging out at home with my friends. Well, but who knows? Maybe I'll make new friends. That's always a possibility when you go on an expedition like this. I mean, we are supposed to meet new people, which is kind of exciting. <coughs> to replace your family with? No, 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 no. I, I still have a good relationship with my, my parents are alive, you know, I'm not like every adventurer that's, uh, I'm not like every adventurer out there that whose parents uh, die or get killed in the campaign. calling out Disney? <laughs> no, most, most people go adventuring because something bad happened to their parents. But no, my parents, as far as I know, are alive. <clears throat> and hopefully will not die over the course of this campaign like, you know, some others. Uh, watch campaign one if you want to know what I'm talking about. Uh, or watch this campaign till the end. Uh, well, what? Are you going to kill? Fuck you. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, anyways. Um, so I said, are you happy though? I know you'd rather be home, but I mean, does this excite you at all about the chance to get out on your own and maybe bring some good to another place? Yeah, I mean, it's and like a, a holiday, you know, that's what people do. What is it? The, you're like between college and working you know they do in europe why am i blanking on what that's called a sabbatical yeah i guess in a way i was gonna say the peace corps but that doesn't exist <laughs> in this world I, joined the peace corps. <laughs> I think we are the peace corps right now actually if you think about it <laughs> um i just you know i just hope i said i just would really suck if you got forced to go on this trek and you didn't yeah, want to go. That's fine. <laughs> learn, learn things. Maybe I'll learn some new spells and whatnot. You're gonna have to rely a lot on yourself. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll learn something about yourself too. Oh, it's called a gap year. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> And you're wrong in sabbatical. No gap years, right? Yeah. Sabbaticals after you're working. Mm -hmm. <coughs> exactly. So, yeah. This is going to be how long is Kyle going to be on before he drops out? Uh, Very soon. Kyle's going on sabbatical via his computer internet uh, choice. All right. Anyways, um, is there anything else? I try. I go back to eating. Well, um, hopefully this food doesn't kill us, so we can keep going on this adventure. Or maybe that's oh, a good thing, and then we just don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't know. Well, you know what they say about what uh, what doesn't kill you, especially when it comes you. <laughs> Uh, no, I was gonna say if it's his food, if it doesn't kill you, we'll make your constitution. Uh, you'll be stronger inside. You'll develop a iron stomach. Bran, how are things going up in your room? <laughs> I simply eat my food and then I will exit out and go back and see if everyone's still there or not. Uh, but simple, nothing dramatic. Unless something's in the room. Uh, you see Cleo, Kenza, and uh, Anja. Uh, Kenza is sitting off in a corner, 
Uh, and while those two were talking, uh, a dwarf has entered the room and is speaking with her. Um, crazy haired, um, an interesting look in the eyes, and he's just speaking hushed whispers over to Kenza. Hmm. Um, I would actually then like to um, eavesdrop. <coughs> Roll a perception check. Because she doesn't like you, Cleo. You see that, that roll? Uh, I did not, unfortunately. 22. Oh, very nice. Um, the dice favor me on good rolls. Yeah. Like- you managed to go over there, um, and as you're listening to the conversation, the uh, something. Oh. Shit, we're losing you. No. Would you repeat right. that, please? As you go over there uh, and begin listening in on the dwarf, you hear as he uh, is uh, is talking about how dangerous this cargo is, and that he's being he's being watched wherever he goes. I'm disappearing, aren't I? Your voice is wherever he goes. I got that. Okay. Uh, he seems to think someone is following him, and it's the gem's fault, uh, and he wants more money for what he paid for. Captain Kenza is arguing that, no, there's a set price. I'm not the final purchaser of these cargo. Uh, as she side-eyes you standing over there just a little bit, Um be like facing the bar or something oh yeah sure she's a paranoid sort as well though um uh and is busy trying to talk him into taking the normal price you know as soon as you give me the rocks they'll stop watching you they'll start watching me and everything will be just fine and dandy uh and if you want to make an insight check Although, do I have you pulled up? I don't. Oh, I should have these all printed out. It would be much easier. Oh, plus six insight. No, you can tell she is uh, uh, <laughs> just like, yeah, no, they'll watch me. It's fine. You're not crazy at all. And he is definitely seeming a little, a little mad in the hatter sort of way. Um. As we go back to Riley, you are continuing looking forward. You took the time to record the scroll. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are you returning the scroll to the shelves where you found it? Yes. Okay. And uh, give me a perception check as we continue looking through books. Uh, Two plus four, six. But... I actually want to go back to the previous religion book that I found about Dagon. Sure. And I I want to just keep studying that one a little bit more. So I I don't know if you want to send me a write-up later on what I learned. We can do that. Um, Screaming. (laughs) Jeez. Okay. Screaming means you're <clears throat> laughing. Get with the lingo. I'm an old man, but no. not that old compared to other people here. Uh, yeah, okay. You continue reading. Um, give me an intelligence check. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will say that as you're reading, 21. you are good, good. You are getting late into the night. Uh, at this point, you both are operating. Well, you versus the other group are operating on completely different time zones at this point. You are two, three o'clock in the morning reading these books, um, unless you choose to stop where you are and head back to the inn. Um, and you guys are certainly earlier on in the night. Um, um. I, yeah, I think I, I'm going to try and get some rest. Um, yeah, I'll go back to the inn 
and try and get a long rest. You do that. You go up to front. Lycor is uh, no longer there, but your book is open uh, in front of you, and you go grab it, and you head back to the inn. All right. Do you lock the door on your way out? Blow out the candle? Uh, no. I leave it as is. Okay. And you head back to the end, and you will get your full long rest for the evening. Um, back to Bran, Cleo, and Angie. <laughs> Angie. I don't know. I think unless there's anything exciting going on, we'll probably just finish um, and go up to bed because I got the crap. Oh, wait, I don't know. How long has it been since the fight? That mm. was earlier today, it has been right? Days. Oh, days. Okay. Days, that's, yes. what I, that's what I thought. I was like, somehow I lost some time there. No, man. I will, yes, actually, you lost a lot of time. I will actually step up to these two. Uh, oh. I'm assuming they're just about done their meal. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Was... And I will kind of look at them, cross legs, sitting down. I look at First, him. I look at like the other furniture and understand. <laughs> <coughs> I plan on taking a trek up to the building on top of the hill. Would either of you like to join? What do you the think is up on the hill? Uh, the, the There's build. a building on top of the hill. I want to learn more about it. Oh, I would go with you, 100%. Um, what, what do you... Not that I won't go, but what is, do you think is in the building at the top of the hill? I assume it's some type of church. I'd like to understand oh. which one it is. Oh, yeah, then sure. If it's not, then... There's nothing else to do right now? It'll at least afford a good view of the island as well. All right. Um, sure. Where do you want you want to go now? I was thinking of going now before it's too late. Okay. You ready? Are you okay to go, Cleo? Yeah, of course. All and right. the day after I drank a whole giant glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both have. Yeah. All our roles are at disadvantage now, right? Uh. <laughs> nah, I don't drink that. I don't drink to excess, so. Thank you. Clear head. That's exactly Actually, what the uh, PC would say. Anyway, come to think of it, maybe, maybe, maybe Anja should drink to excess, considering it might help her sleep better at night. Maybe. All right, but anyways, uh, out of game. Uh, I'd like to ask the GM this: Is it obvious that Anja appears to be tired or suffering from lack of sleep? <laughs> How have I been sleeping lately? I mean, how often is how often do I have dreams? Uh, Mr. DM. Give me a couple of D6s. Uh, by couple, give me six. Six D6s. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Where's my murder hobo? Ah, yeah, because I have six D sixes sixes in murder hobo dice. That's exactly why I asked you. Murder hobo die. You could get those from Pirate Dog Dice. But only if you appear on the show at least three times, right, Hannah? They're really cool. By the way, uh, I do oh, want the Hannah. Hannah. You mean Caitlin? No, no, Me? I don't know. Hannah. No, Hannah was in the chat. I don't know oh, if she's okay. still there. Okay. Well, I just insulted Hannah on the chat. Oh well. So, all right. So, <laughs> do you want? It. Do you want each one individually or combined total? Uh, individually. All right. So I have a six, a one. Three fours and a five. Four apparently is the magic number. Uh, <coughs> you have gotten some restful sleep, although you did have this dream uh, somewhere in between the uh, uh, the middle of the voyage. It's been about two weeks since you've actually left the rule, Katan. Uh, uh, and somewhere in, say, like the Friday of the first week, uh, you had this dream of a city uh, where the architecture was uh, like uh, the head.
heads of pins. These long, <laughs> tall towers with these giant hoops over the top of them. Um, lots of circles. And you uh, dreamt of walking up and down these streets. Um, and just being in this town and it's feels familiar like you've been there before um but other than that you've had regular dreams some of them monsters coming out to snatch you from the night but you have been able to sleep rather well other than the couple of nights there in the middle so i don't really look that bad i mean you've been having dreams your entire life so yeah you probably look right. older than you should. That could, that's fair. So there's your answer. I don't like that terrible. Okay. It's just like a 65 year old brand new greenhorn ranger. Probably, probably look like me. I mean, constantly dark circles under my eyes all the time. So. There. Wait, you mean you don't do that for the street? No. No, no, no. That'd be that'd be pretty epic, but no. You look uh, fine. So, if you're both willing, then let us go before it gets too late. Um, another thing, Kyle. Uh, yes. Throughout the town, did we see various like residents, or was it more like a ghost town? And if we did see residents, uh, what was their general condition <laughs> or appearance? Um, you see more uh, people near the waterfront than you do farther away from it. Um, and the children themselves look like normal everyday children you see the older individuals um uh are very they look old i mean it's like man did you have that kid when you were 55 jeez uh that kind of old they're going bald um although you don't see anyone who's like a grandparent or anything like that um I would say fairly froggish features if you were to put an animal to their face as opposed to rat faced, you know, shrewd looking. They're generally a little dumpy, dour, uh, other alliterative words that start with D. Um, and there's a distaste like someone put a turd in their mouth as they look at you. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there like a road up to the building up top or? Sure. You take the road back down to the harbor uh, where you hear some ra raucous noise going on from the <laughs> cauldron. Um, voices that are probably recognizable as the dwarven triplets and a weird crackling voice that is clearly Jeremiah singing a terrible rendition of a Bokob song. Uh, <laughs> and you can just mm. skirt right by that if you want, uh, but there is a low road that leads up to the cliffs and up to the uh, stone building up there. Yes, I will I will want to head that way. I don't know, but the other two. Oh, yeah, no, that's where you said you wanted to go. That's And what time of day is going. it at this point as we're heading up there? You're getting up till midnight. It is late. Okay. Oh, yeah. gosh. You uh, took a ship, you nearly sunk it, and you made things worse. You got into the town late. <laughs> I will act. I will light up a lantern. I hooded lantern then. Make sure there is light. Okay. I have dark vision, so uh, I can see okay. Or I can see shades of gray within 60 feet. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Um, if we're going to talk about that, just be aware that even with dark vision, unless it's a bright moon night or you do not have a light source on you, it is checks made at disadvantage still, as opposed to humans who would have no checks whatsoever. Yeah, no, Brand. that's that's just fair. <laughs> that is fair. It's it's not like I have always realized dark vision's not like still not like normal vision. Yeah. Uh, you will pass <laughs> by a large mansion halfway up the hill. Um, is there any type of um? Uh, I'm thinking of uh, identification like uh, residents of blah blah blah. You do find on the manor, uh, 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 Fen Manor, F E N N, um, as well as a few other names, Oshawa. Uh, uh, oh, goodness, let me check my notes here again. Uh, Fenk. Uh, and Frederick are the houses you pass along the way. Um, I'll continue on to the larger one at the top. Okay. And if all of you continue up there, um, you eventually find a stone building um, and it's this weird metallic gray stone. Um, there's all sorts of um, shapes and ruins carved into it. Uh, some depicting uh, fish. There's this sea creature uh, devouring a whale, but it's the same size as the whale itself. Um, uh, octopi, uh, tuna, swordfish, sharks, uh, octopus. Oh, I said octopi earlier. Okay. Didn't I? I just wanted to say octopus. Uh, there's your mature content for the night. Cthulhu rises and. <laughs> uh, we're children here on the show. Uh, puffer fish, uh, all sorts of <coughs> sea life there. Lobsters. No lobsters, strangely what? enough. No. What? No, that's not right. Rock um, lobster. Do I spot any holy symbols or things that appear to be like holy symbol marks or such? Uh, it is an open building and you can walk on in. And if oh. you do, there is um, an altar near the front and a large uh, uh, symbol of swirling objects uh, uh, in the center of it. So there's no door to this place? There is no door. It is open. And yet, despite having all these buildings that have moss growing on them um, or just are perpetually damp, crumbling, it's damp here, but the building is probably... It's either the most well taken care of or the stonework that it's made from. Uh, it looks like maybe someone carved in these symbols yesterday. Although there's no dust on the floor. It's it's in great shape. Is this more like I can't think of the architectural term. Is this more like a cathedral or more like a open air um Ryan. You know, like um, the Greek architecture where they, you know, Greek they don't really have walls yeah, but right. the roof. Um, it like doesn't it have a front door itself. There is a door. You walk through it. Uh, imagine more, um, say, uh, uh, Egyptian architecture, although not to say that grand design have a door there but it's an open door there's nothing yeah. blocking you from entering it you walk in there is uh, a light uh, a skylight moonlight in there you see the light of the moon as it comes through it's not, not a very bright light um, and you do have these pillars and a larger opening out facing the sea 
Um, and if you are all in there with him, uh, I'm gonna. St- I want to. Exception check for me. I'm gonna go in, but I want to kind of stay towards the back. Sure. So. Nice. Still make the perception check. Yeah. Eighteen. Eighteen. Wow. Okay. Uh, ooh, what the hell is it? That's a twenty. A dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. And Cleo, are you taking a look? Yeah, I'm gonna hang out with. Wait, Ron, right? Say your name. Ran. Ran? I don't know. Why do I? Hey, hey, I'm the one who mispronounced his name here. Get your own shit. Well, I was like, I don't know. Okay, I made sexual innuendos at the show there when you first walked in. I apologize. I I did steal your stick. I don't you take misnaming people though. That's mine. What'd you roll, Cleo? Clear. What, <laughs> what am I checking with? Perception. It's just perception. I don't know. You changed up. Make it easier. I'm doing all this thing. Make it easy. Uh, not natural twenty. Dirty twenty. It's like me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Huh. That's fun. You, Bran. Your light is. You see something out in the distance over the water. And you realize you can't see it. And as you turn down your lantern, all three of you see this bright, shining light out in the middle of the ocean. In under the water or up top? Uh, it appears to be on the surface of the water, but you can't make out any detail. It's just this light out in the distance. Does it look like it's coming from a lighthouse or something? Potentially. Like it's disappearing. Although that is a lighthouse that is fairly far away. Is it moving? Or stationary? What's Uh, the shape of it? Stationary. You can't see the shape. It just appears to be a lighthouse. What's the specific color of it? That's a good question. That is a decent question. Uh... At now, it is, gosh, I want to say like blue, yellow is kind of these colors alternating over the distance. Like a aurora? Uh, sort of, except it's a pinpoint. Hmm. So it's it's sort of like a lighthouse light that isn't turning. It's stationary. It's a constant light. But it's, but it's shifting between bluish and yellowish. From what you can tell. Hmm. Huh. So it just looks like a strong light, or does it look like a diluted light? Like it's through a murky lens or like out in the open, you know, firelight. It is a constant light. Um but again it does alter between the <laughs> blue and yellow. Blue obviously is a little bit fainter than the yellow, which is a little bit brighter. Um, but if you would assume a lighthouse, even at the technology stage where you guys are now, you would expect a flashing light still. This is very interesting. What do you make of that? I have no idea. Mm. Possibly be some, be from a ship, maybe. Yeah, ship, magical surge. Magical eels. Seems to be on the right I mean, I mean, that would be more, I think, underneath the surface, though. It seems to be coming from above the surface of the water. I would think it'd be a ship, maybe anchored out there. <laughs> I've I've heard tales of this ship that was 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 basically um, it was a hollowed out hell is it like you know angler fish? That's what it was. It was like a dead angler fish. A bunch of rats, fat folk took over. And it was quite absurd. It, it is, but it would have something like a light like that. I dream. I no, I dreamed about it. it. It's actually a thing, by the way, in another game. Um. It, so the light just is stationary, correct? 
It's not like it's heading towards us. It is a stationary light. It's not moving. It's not, so it's, a sh- it's, it's not a ship. Out there glowing. Uh, as I said, it could be a ship maybe anchored. Maybe it's an island. I mean, do we see any islands out there that we saw coming in? At this time of night and coming in, there are a couple, but they are not in the direction that you came from. Oh, so we went. So we didn't go by that spot. You didn't um, go by the spot. I will actually start taking a look around the temple itself. Again, uh, sure. looking for any holy symbols, uh, anything of interest. Not looking for loot per se, but sure, sure. Um, if you go up to the altar, there is the large holy symbol. You would assume but it's nothing like you've ever seen before but it's large enough you have the insight and the religious knowledge to assume that this would be your holy symbol in this place um the altar itself um is almost immaculate looking and if you want to make an investigation check sure mm-hmm. oh that rolled off a 17 to a 3, so that's only a 9. Only a 9. It is an immaculate temple, as far as you can tell. Someone really takes care of this. You might even think that they do a better job taking care of it than they do the Temple of the Raven Queen. Oh, do I see any types of offerings or anything around here? There are no offerings. Any holy texts? No. Other than the symbols carved into <coughs> the stone itself. And there are symbols everywhere. Uh, are there any braziers or such around? There is a brazier at the end of the cliff, about 20 feet out from the large opening to the sea itself. Uh, I'd like to head towards there and just kind of mm-hmm. shift through the ash or stone you know see if it's um normal wood or charcoal or something different uh there is ash uh and some wood there looks like there has been a fire without doing a survival check you don't know how long it was sure I'd like to do a survival. Nine. Nine. Uh, There was a fire just here right now. It's amazing you didn't see it. Obviously, the building must have been in the way. No, it's not that bad of a roll. No, uh, you're just really indeterminate. I mean, you stick your hand in there. There's no heat, and the wood and the ash is wet. Um but everything in this town so far has been wet except for maybe the inside of the Dagon it in and they was trying to get moist in there. Give uh, it a sniff see if there's anything other than the smell of burning There's some incense in there Okay, that's going on. Yeah and you, as you dig your hands in there you also find You do find some burnt offerings. Glass beads, just brown, cracked from intense heat. Seems about normal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cleo, Anja. Mm -hmm. Anything you two would like to do while you're up here at this spooky temple all by yourselves? I'm just hanging at the back. I'm not a real religious type. So I just kind of hang at the back and I'm just keeping an eye on things. <laughs> There's no like boxes up or bins or things? Boxes, no bins. Nothing. There's no place for a congregation to sit down, although there is the altar at the top there where maybe a priest might stand as he talks to his flock. Um, 
for school. No. There's no, uh, there's no like blood stains on the uh, altar, is there? Make an investigation check. I'd have to go up to it though. <laughs> uh, I will. Come on, go, 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 go. That's not good. From back here, I can't tell. That was only an eight. Yeah, you'd actually have to approach the table to take a look at it, but yeah. you don't see any signs from back there. Uh, uh, however, you do have the Yog Sothri skill, yes? Uh, uh, yeah, go I do. Go ahead and give me that roll. What is that? Intelligence? I would assume. Uh, wisdom. 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 So wisdom plus proficiency, right? Because I don't have it actually in this thing. Plus, mm-hmm. So that would be a plus four. Uh, I'll just roll for it. Uh, nope, that's only a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <coughs> the symbol is calling to you. The s- ruins built in the stone. They're familiar. Are, th- are they from a dream? Or maybe they're some sort of language of the woods that your father tried to teach you. Oh, interesting. So if this, if this, I will actually then start proceeding in and exploring more than if this seems like it's connected. What symbol, what, which symbol seems familiar? The symbol over the altar. Although even as you look around the room, a lot of this is beginning to look familiar. Oh. Oh yeah. Um, is there any type of writing on the walls? Hang on, I write this down. You know, religious texts. Religious texts. Uh, you find. What languages do you speak? And I'll ask this of everybody except for poor. Poor Riley, who is just making terrible comments about all of you guys. <laughs> uh, oh, you aside from, no, go ahead. You can't see it, but I do have comprehend languages as one of the two spells uh, I know. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, see, that's why you know you should hang out with us because you uh, think useful. I, I went have... to read books instead. <laughs> I can't fault him for that. Uh, no, I, I think speech. it was a perfect idea. Uh, what is that? Dwarvish, Elvish, and if I recall, also Aklo from you. Okay. Uh, so these are very similar to deep speech. Um, and for you guys, a little meta and brand you would know this because you do speak both of them. While deep speech is something Abeloth speak, um, which is very similar to the Cthulhu mythos in D and D. It is more of an aquatic um, side to the mythos, as opposed to Aklo, which is known by more land-dwelling uh, uh, creatures of the mythos, um, ancient human beings, and so forth. What um, was the the la- sorry, What was the language again? Deep speech is I sp- what I speak. That okay. You also recognize <laughs> the gills on on the stick, Clara. <laughs> and she jumps no. up. Into the no. Water. <laughs> there are no gills. I'm not a druid. Uh, with the deep speech, and you begin to look at <coughs> the walls, um, you read these stories of these creatures, these things known as deep ones, whatever that may mean, um, as you two have never actually come in contact with anything like that. Um, But it's a race that lives under the water. um, And you learn of these battles, these fights, and their leader, this Dagon, destroying whole towns single-handedly, devouring creatures like whales, and now the pictograms start to make sense. 
And as you continue on, the, the stories become more and more fanatic, um, worshiping of a godlike being of this great, this all father Dagon. And I would like you two to both make the very first dread saving throws of the Fucking game. Hell. Those are wisdoms. Saving throws, right? That is Yeah, fun. do it on D&D Beyond. I, I want to see these rolls. <laughs> sure. <laughs> High that was not fails. great, man. Oh, no. <laughs> that wasn't good either. I, you know, it's oh. funny. <laughs> Both of those rolls suck. So it was an eight and now a nine. So you get the nine, I get the eight. I mean, I'm not really shocked here. My wisdom's not terrible, but it's not a it's not one of my main saves. Okay. Well, uh, to go out of the game a little bit for our audience here, we are doing the Cthulhu Mythos, um, which includes the dread uh, uh, rules. Um, which is a simply uh, very similar to the exhaustion rules in D&D 5e. Instead of just being frightened, which you still can be, you have seven levels of dread of something otherworldly, something horrible uh, coming to haunt you, to eat you, or to do horrible things like remove your brain and put it in a jar. Uh, both of you have two levels of dread which is spooked uh I'm supposed that's it. and spooked i don't and suppose so, that's in here is it it's not D no. beyond it's not in D and beyond and we can talk about it a little bit later um but right now you can't go any further into this building you need to leave I think it is uh, time to go. I agree. This is a odd place. And yes, it's. Uh, I think it is uh, wise if we leave at this point. It's late, anyways. We should get some sleep. We should. Cleo, are you coming? Yeah, I'm not impacted with having to do anything. You can't, uh, can you read deep speech? I don't think so, so no, I'd be okay then. You Sometimes are... it's bad to read the books. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> if you want to make an insight check on these two, though, you can figure out just... Uh... Nope, nope, nope. Thirteen. Thirteen. They're definitely not the same as when they first entered into the building, but, I mean, if they want to leave... All right. And uh, why don't you three make a perception check on your way out the building? Do I want to make this? Do I really want to make this? Riley coming for us. That would be... Perception coming out of the building? 11. Okay. 22. Okay. Cleo? 22 as well. 22 as well. Bran, Cleo, you just hear the wind howling. Anya, you hear the monstrous groan of a creature as you walk down the hill. What I did? Go with that sucky trick. We're playing by Cthulhu rules, yeah. bitches. <laughs> it's like golf. It's like golf, yeah. Let's get back to the inn right now. <laughs> yeah, the Dagon it in. Yeah, the Dagon it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go to the other place. It seems to be more populated. <laughs> FYI, Actually, I went back to the inn, and that's where I'm asleep right now. I was going to say, <laughs> more populated doesn't necessarily mean better. Actually, I want to go there and talk to people about that light. The cauldron or the Dagon at the end? The cauldron. Cauldron seems like 
to have more people. And I guess we go buy it on the way home, and, uh, way back anyways, because I believe we went by it on the way here. Sure. Uh, you talk. walk in, uh, and completely unlike the Dagon it in, this <laughs> place is run down. The boards, the beams supporting the building are wet, damp. You can even see a bit of the, um, oh, what's the barnacles growing on the beams themselves. And in the center, the namesake of the tavern its ooh, self is a gigantic, massive cauldron pitted with a fire underneath it uh, and some sort of uh, a stew bubbling in the middle there that smells like fish and cabbage. And yeah, no. As you walk in there, you literally see one of these obviously local people uh, coming in with a bucket of water and fish and dumps the whole thing into it, seaweed and all, and then goes back outside. And it looks like they're refilling their stop for later on. Um, there are gnomes. You see Jeremiah uh, um, sleeping in a very awkward position with a chair in the middle of his back um, and passed out drunk. I kind um, of, I'm kind of laughing to myself at that. Some I will chaperone. actually go over to Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah and see if he's okay because that's not going to go well later. No, uh, he is obviously very drunk. You don't need to make a check to see that. And just by moving that chair a little bit and adjusting how he's sleeping there on the ground, um, you can help him make sure that he wakes up having a much better morning than he was going to. Although you see a very large woman. If he's your friend, you need to take him out of here. He can't sleep here. Are you closed? Are you paying? I can. Yeah, we're closed. Okay. I'll take my money back to the other place then. Sure. Uh, and if you like, you can collect the triplets while you're there. They're huddled up, drinking, talking, laughing at Jeremiah as well. I will Actually, I'm take Jeremiah walk. up. I will look at Chloe. And Cleo. Cleo. Yes, see, I'm going to do it too, apparently. Unintentionally. It's my Cleo. thing! Sorry, Mr. I will DM. look at Cleo and say, Cleo, what do you want to do with him? Click into a thing to have you to do with Jeremiah. I don't care. Are you gonna bring him to your room? Oh no, he can get his own room. Where he's he's passed. He clearly cares. He's passed out. I'm literally holding him up. You bring like him to out. your room outside. I don't think the innkeeper will enjoy that. Bring him to my room. Jeez. You really want him to hang out with you? He's passed out. He's not going to hang out with anybody. We're going to bed to sleep. Maybe you can stay up all night, but I'm not going to. Yeah, but isn't he like passed out? Yes. yes. Yeah, if he wants to deal with that. You can sleep in my room if she doesn't want Very to deal well. with it. I will uh, drag him back to the Dagon in. Dagon it. Dagon it in. Dagon it. <laughs> this has got to be a Kyle place. What? No. Uh, so you are dragging or carrying Jeremiah over. Yes. Uh, I'll help him. Get there about the same time that Riley gets there. Um carrying his book full of brim and knowledge um and before we go into captain before we go into the inn oh you weren't even going to make it into the inn but go ahead oh uh why are well if we're still alone and riley's there as well sure you will meet him about halfway between the dagon inn and the cauldron 
as he comes out from the repository. Ah, there you are, Riley. I assumed you went to the repository. Oh, yes. I, I learned uh, quite a bit about goddesses and, and Dagon and, and many things. It was, it was lots of fun. Dagon? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, since you're here, I wanted to mention it to all of you. It seems that we are taking on extra cargo, as you know. But I did overhear that some of this extra cargo could bring potential trouble. Okay. They specify what sort of trouble? I did not hear, but mm, it's and really not my as business. You say that you reach the Dagon Inn where Captain Kenza is cradling the body of a manic dwarf. What? She sees you, points out in a direction. That man stole the cargo. We have to get him. What man? And you see, running down the hill and towards the direction, uh, once again, of the temple at the top of the hill, a misshapen creature running away with this leather bag containing your all-important cargo to the island. And that is where we will end tonight's session. Ah! That's awesome! <laughs> Great place to end it, too. Yeah, uh, that's it, guys. Uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> hey, everybody who uh, stuck around watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, not a lot of action, but maybe some lore building there, here and there. So I hope that was uh, good for all of you. Um, obviously, there's going to be a fight next time. So hang on for two weeks. Uh, until then, you can follow us on our other shows at Twitch. We got one coming up on Saturday. The Calamity Campaign, the Bronze Age slash Stone Age show. Uh, uh, with our wonderful DM Frank, as well as um, those other people you in mean Texas, have Scott. Power. Scott. Well, Scott might not be there if he doesn't have power. Oh, I know. Scott's in Texas, so everybody, you know, send yeah. good vibes there because uh, we all know what's going on. Here and covering themselves in their skin, so he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also a David. Oh yeah, no Scott, and David, a, Rob, Rob and Thulu. Jesse. Yep. Yeah, no, I know all of them. I just like I to pretend so. I'm cool. And <coughs> yeah, sure. Uh, well, this is the cool show, clearly. Exactly, obviously. We are the cool show. We're the ones who dress up, guys. That's right. Uh, so, but if you have anything you want to say to us, you can follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our archives over on YouTube. <coughs> if you want to talk about D&D, talk about what happened tonight, maybe give out some conspiracy, some rumors. That's always fun in the Cthulhu game. I know, it does... You should. Discord Here's a channel. Discord. Let me do my ramble. No. Let me do my ramble because I. No, I'm it. freaking getting revenge for all those times you talk. If you want to get some cool RPG gifts, you can visit us at our store. <laughs> or importantly, if you want to be on the talk show coming up this Tuesday, or the one shot coming up next Saturday, uh, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter or hit us up on the Gmail. Uh, thank you again to our sponsors, uh, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like shit, like these people were tonight. Go get some <laughs> dice from Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, and a special thank you to Oddfish Game for their adventure sense. I'm looking for the funky fish that they're going to oh, put out I, here eventually. Uh, what do you one. got there, Carol? I've got the tavern. D down here, we got, we got two kids. DJ got one, too. Oh. I stole the uh, the tavern one, I believe. That's exactly how yeah, the Dagon at Inn smells. Like, smoky. Well, it's kind of smoky food. It's, it doesn't smell <laughs> like shit. That's the cauldron. Uh <laughs> But it's, then also, it smells uh, good. Yeah, no, they're great, except for some <laughs> of them, uh, which are still an excellent smell to have if you're trying to be in a putrid sewer. Uh, <laughs> we also want to plug in their Shine Project. Again, if you're coming up with your own original ideas, uh, I like the book because it asks the questions that make you think about how to best answer them. Uh, and thank you again, again, again to D, our wonderful artist, for coming up with these awesome portraits. 
uh, so that we could dress like them or so that the portraits would look like us. I'm not sure at this point. Uh, <laughs> and if you are tired and you don't want to look at costumed people playing D&D, you could just listen to our podcast and said, which is somewhere here on the screen. Uh, other than that, uh, final thoughts around the table? Starting with Carol, says she had so much to say. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, my God. This is so good. Uh, things are ramping up already. And uh, uh, we'll definitely have to discuss what the whole, uh, what the hell was that called? The dread factor there. The we'll have to discuss factor. that. Uh, I can't wait for two weeks. Oh, my God. It did take long to jump in this head first. And, and I'm already now, like, totally hooked tons of fun and and thanks to all you guys on who are on in chat tonight uh got a lot of interesting discourse there that i when when i look away once in a while all right brand final thoughts <laughs> i think we're heading towards some very interesting times learning about gods that shouldn't be known figuring out what maybe what we're going to be shipping around I don't know. Maybe a bunch of fish people will attack us. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Cleo, what do you think is going to happen next? What are your final thoughts? I'm just glad to not be on the boat anymore. I was like, mm, it's going to be eons on this boat. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get back on it, you know. Uh, We're I not know. at our final destination. <laughs> I know. This is a great place, though. I wish I could obviously read more of the stuff because clearly if there's like no. a weird cover with that there's got to be more weird stuff like you know <laughs> you know it's this interesting thing where if you're familiar with call of cthulhu you don't want to read books yeah the reality the reality <laughs> is that's actually where all the, that's where a lot of it happens the bad stuff happens when you start reading the books and looking at things yeah i, I plan to have my character being a a, a mad insane psycho person by the end of this <laughs> we're all gonna be the there. end yeah yeah maybe by you know level three sure. yeah. all right riley your final thoughts and uh just out of curiosity what do you think happened to lycor uh i think lycor potentially was fled and told the rest of the evil people where i was at so they can take us all and sacrifice us to, or sacrifice us to Dagon. That's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah, the way you kept on saying that everyone had like a frog-like depiction made me uh, really worried, especially since we're having these uh, talks <laughs> about, you know, deep one speech being everywhere. Are we in Innsmouth? Yeah, really? I was just about to say we're we're it's we're a little insmithy. Insmith, uh, we're you know what? I, I, <laughs> I, or we should say Newburyport because let's face it, that's what it's based on. Yeah, they were just right up. That's right up the street from us. We're oh, literally yeah. in the next oh, yeah. town over from Newburyport. We get, we get to see all the fishy people. I'll be honest. I didn't take the. Uh, I didn't do the really deep dive into the Cthulhu mythos. I just started listening to Shadow of Insmith, and I was like. That's Rizante. That that's the first place they're gonna end up. Ah, so awesome. <laughs> so friggin' perfect. <laughs> All right. But with that, everybody wave to the camera, say goodnight. Thank you, everybody who watched or who is going to watch. And you can pick up the clues that these guys obviously did not that I left in the show. <gasps> Good and there's night. Easter eggs. Oh, there's lots of Easter eggs.